What's up guys? Welcome back to Lick Branch Farms. My name is David and I'm out here in the high tunnel today getting ready to start seed for one of the biggest workhorse crop varieties that we plant for our fall market garden. Um, it's one that we cannot go to market without throughout the fall and the winter time. It's just so popular and I'm going to tell you what that is right after this. All right, guys, welcome back. So, um, yeah, it's a rainy, windy day here in North Carolina. A um, little nasty outside, so I'm going to stay in here and get some things done. Matter of fact, I'm going to clean this corner out over here in just a little bit. I got another heater. Well, I got a heater, 150,000 BTU heater that I'm going to put in here in the next week or two to get ready to start putting some of our uh, fall tomatoes in. And I want to go ahead and get the heater in because I have to back the tractor in here to lift the heater up and I can't plant these two back rows here until I get that done. So I want to try to knock that out sooner than later. But yeah, um, one of the most popular greens that we take to market throughout the fall and the winter time is spinach. And it is so cold tolerant and cold hardy that um, it's literally one of the best greens to grow in your market garden for the fall and winter time. Simply because, I mean, it's pretty much a, you, pl you plant it and forget it. It just, as long as you keep cutting it, it's going to keep going. And um, I've had it inside of this tunnel here, you know, in the 20s with no problem. And, you know, we don't generally get that cold. But uh, I've never had to use row cover on it. Some of the crops that I planted outside when it got cold never really had any damage to it. Um, it just kind of grew on its own. You never really had to do a whole lot of maintenance work to it. So I've been planting spinach, you know, a couple years. And there's some varieties out there that you can plant that'll make it through the summer. But for the most part, spinach is a cool season crop. Um, germination is a little tough because it likes cool soil temperatures to germinate. I like to get mine around the 50, 65 degree range. Um, and sometimes that's tough. And there's a few tricks that you can do. But there's one surefire way that you can make it almost 100% germination if you keep your germination temperature right. If you make it germinate or you set up your germination chambers or your mats and all for 70 degrees and you can keep it at 65, 70 degrees, if you do this one trick, you will have really, really good germination when it comes to spinach seeds. So I've been toying around with different varieties. You know, there's a lot of hybrids out there. Um, the ones that I have stuck with over the years, I do really good with space. Space, I have planted in the summer, in the spring, and in the fall, and in the wintertime, and I've got really good results with it now i've been playing around with sun angel and i've been playing around with a new one from john it's called calibri i think that's how you pronounce it um i might have just massacred that word but if anybody knows the correct way to pronounce that put it in the comments but what i've got here is calibri i think that's how you pronounce that anyway i'm gonna show you how i prime my spinach seeds in order to get better germ germination so what I do is I dump my seeds into a container like this and fill it full of well water or fill it with well water and I put my seeds in it and basically what I'm doing is soaking this in non-chlorinated water don't use tap water use well water or use you know another form of water that does not have chlorine chemicals anything in it and basically soak your seed overnight and what you're going to do is if after 24 hours you're going to strain your seeds and when i strain my seeds in and i'll show you here when i get them out of here what i'm going to strain my seeds in is basically just a little nylon sock and it's dirty because i'm straining thousands of seeds with it so what i'm gonna do is just wring the water out of them doesn't have to be anything special but just kind of wring that excess water out of them and there you have it prime spinach seeds now you don't have to use them all at one time we more than likely will because i got three 242s and what i'm gonna do is go through here and we're gonna seed these three trays 
I've got some already germinated inside the germination chamber. I'll take you in a minute and show you. But we're going to seed all these trays here, and then we're going to put them inside there. It's supposed to be cool the next couple days, you know, mid-70s, so I think we'll be okay as far as germination temperature. But doing this, one thing, priming these seeds is going to up our germination rate tremendously with these seeds here. And we'll kind of keep a, a record of prime versus non-prime because the ones I've got germinated in there now, I did not prime those seeds. I planted them straight. Matter of fact, I double seeded the trays. So I'm going to take these and I'm also going to double seed these trays. But the difference is the ones inside have not been primed and the ones here have been primed. So we'll kind of do a little comparison and see how it works out. And rake all these seeds up. I'm sticking to the bottom over here. Like I said, you don't have to use all these at one time. You can actually put them into something and store them um, after they dry, of course. Put them out and let them dry. And then put them in something and store them just like you would any other seed. But note that they have already been primed. So what it means is that the germination process has already been started, even though they haven't been put in the soil yet. So what I'm going to do now is wring the rest of these seeds out. And then I'm going to take you in there and show you the ones that I've already germinated but um, we're not primed so let's go inside and take a look all right guys so here we are inside the barn in the germination chamber and you can see now this is um sun angel this is sun angel spinach and some of them are still germinating you can see here that tray looks a little better but that's what your spinach is going to look like once it germinates and the temperature in here is like 74 degrees so um it is not extremely warm um comfortable but still, like I said, you know, celery or celery, I'm sorry, I'm saying that because I got celery trays right up under here, but um, spinach likes a cooler germination temperature and some people like to trick spinach into germinating by putting it in the freezer for, or refrigerator for a couple of days and then taking it out and leaving it in cool parts of the building or on the concrete or something like that. So that kind of helps it germinate too. All right, guys, I'm gonna put my eyeballs on and I'm gonna get to plant some of these spinach seeds, but uh, yeah, I, like I said, I'm going to double seed it. I'm going to seed them hot. That's what I call seeding hot is double seeding. And that ups my germination chances, you know, tremendously simply because I'm putting two seeds in each tray. And plus, both of those seeds have been primed, meaning that they've both been soaked in water and the germination process has already been kind of started. And I'm looking for good things out of these trays. You can do this with beets. You can do this with uh, Swiss chard. Um, and it works really well with beets. I tried it last year with some red ace beets and was really surprised. I think I got the best germination I ever had out of a tray of beets um, using that method. So um, I've got a bunch of pelleted beet seed right now. I accidentally ordered pelleted when I ordered it, so I'm going to use it up. But I have ordered some uh, more beet seed, unpelleted, and when it gets in, we'll actually try that with beets too and see how that process works. All right, guys. Um, yeah, that's gonna take a little bit. I'm gonna get that first tray done and give you a shot of it and uh, put a label on it and then I'll finish the other two whenever I put the camera up. But I kind of wanted to give you guys a shot of the heater that I'm gonna wind up putting in this tunnel um, here in the next couple days, hopefully. Um, I've got two of them. I've got this Moline or Moline. It's 125,000 BTU. And then I got this Dayton here it's 150,000 BTUs and that's the one that I'm gonna put in that 60 foot tunnel and uh, put it up in the very top corner there and utilize that tunnel for late season tomatoes and cucumbers and all that good stuff I might as well show you my tomatoes while I'm out here but a lot of things still out here on the the racks some of it's probably never gonna see dirt but um, see if I can go down the line bok choy didn't really get a real good germination on it because i left it on the mats too long and i think i burnt these seeds up not sure we'll see some of them's trying to come in eggplants you see me plant those in the last video red onions uh, green onions white onions or sweet onions however you want to call them um brussels sprouts got to get those in the ground can't wait much longer and i've got somewhere i'm going to put them too probably right out here because none of this stuff you see all these plants out here that was an early season cauliflower and broccoli. And the last week, this past week, we're coming out of now. We were in the 90s. We was at 92 degrees one day. On that black mat, those plants can't take that. It's just unseasonably warm to be the end of September. It just, it's crazy. 
Red Ace Beats, these are the ones that I told you that I planted that were pelleted and I didn't prime them, so, you know, okay, but it's splotchy germination. I've seen a lot better. This is green kohlrabi. These are cabbage plants, which I've started planting them on that side of the barn. These are cabbage plants. These are the red kohlrabi that you're, excuse me, purple kohlrabi that you seen me do the video on here a week or so ago. Cauliflower, cauliflower, broccoli. This is the fall tomatoes. And these plants are absolutely beautiful. Look at them. And they are gonna go in that tunnel here in hopefully the next week or two. And I got to get that heater in first, like I said, because, make sure I plug one in, yeah. Because I got to get the tractor backed up in there to pick the heater up. According to the paperwork, that heater weighs 168 pounds. Back in my young days, that wouldn't have been a problem, but not no young buck no more, and I don't want another hernia. Um, have to have another hernia operation, so that's what that tractor's for. All right, so I'll give you a shot of this over here. You know, I don't really like making gardening videos without showing people the garden, so if that makes sense. Anyway, the green kohlrabi that I transplanted out here two weeks ago, I think, the rabbits found it and the rabbits love it. Problem is, is that I've started on the structural part of this greenhouse here, closing it in. I've got plans to put a louver here and I've got plans to put a louver there, possibly, and put the fan in the very back. So I've got to frame these up before I can put the plastic on the end walls and dry everything in. So I'm really not gonna get excited about replanting anything um, as far as greens are concerned because they're not really messing with lettuce. You know, you can see we got some beautiful lettuce in here. They're not really messing with the lettuce, but they are annihilating that cold rubber. Look, I've got shade cloths. I've got, you know, any manner of something to put over that to stop it from happening. But, I mean, what's the use? I can leave that there and let them eat on that to keep them out of everywhere else. And, you know, once I get everything dried in and get all the plastic put on, then worry about it. It's really been too hot for kohlrabi anyway it really hasn't done all that well seen a lot of bug pressure but you know um it's getting about that time i'm getting ready to start some more too because i just bought a bunch more seed and i'm gonna have to get real hot and heavy on that that's why i'm doing the spinach now because spinach kohlrabi swiss chard kale all of those greens like that those are huge money makers for us you know during the fall and winter time and we need to make sure we get enough of them in the ground now so they have a chance to mature and we'll have something to harvest on throughout the winter time all right, so I'm going to show you this, and then I'm going to get back to planting um, spinach seeds. This is stonehead cabbage, and I transplanted these guys yesterday. And I still got five more rows to do. Um, I think I have enough to do all five of those, but uh, yeah. You know, I'd already talked about us moving another tunnel over here next to the one we're working on now, and eventually building two more out here. And that's still the plan, but um, I've got so much tunnel work to do right now, it ain't even funny. I mean, seriously. I've got to finish this tunnel. I got a whole nother tunnel to build. I got two more tunnels to build on the other side of this one. I still have a hundred foot tunnel coming from the county that is going over here on the other side of where this tunnel on this trailer is. Man, I got enough to keep me busy till probably January, February, which that's what I was going to do anyway, was work on these tunnels in the cold season because I won't be doing anything else, just prepping ground. And that's still the plan, but because I know how fast, you know, once it starts turning cool around here, you know, it'll be off and on, off and on, off and on. It'll get cool, we'll get down into the 40s, and then it'll pop back up into 50s and 60s. It'll do that, you know, all up into December. But come January, it's going to start getting cold, and it'll start sticking around in the 30s and 40s. Not for long, but enough to where anything outside just won't make it. So my biggest focus right now, after I bring that other tunnel home, they're going to stay on pallets or something around here. I'll figure out somewhere to put them, but I'm going to finish this one. I'm going to be working on this one really hard over the next week or two. The next one I'm going to put in right here where that stake is, and there's another stake right there. That tunnel's going to go here. I'm going to leave four foot in between the two just for a walkway. And once these two tunnels are up and complete, we're going to plant them out, and that tunnel and this tunnel is going to be our main source of, you know, winter crops is what I'm going to call it because cabbage, you can make it outside. Kale can make it outside. Onions can make it outside. We really don't need to do anything, you know, other than, you know, what we're going to plant our lettuces, our spinach, our kohlrabi, things of that nature. And um, they move in and out really, really quick. You know, we sell a lot of lettuce in the winter. We sell a lot of spinach in the winter. So I'm hoping to have four rows of spinach and about eight rows of lettuce. All this stuff you see out here, every bit of that will be planted out in this, you know, fall and winter uh, vegetables. But once it gets so cold, we won't be able to do it anymore outside. We'll be focusing mainly on the inside. So 
that's my whole drive behind getting everything planted out now so we can harvest on it up until it does turn off cold all this stuff you see out here is cabbages and collards and all that and everything you see down there in that garden broccoli and turnips all that good stuff yeah we got plenty of outside crops we need to be focusing more on the protective culture because that's what's going to get us into the january february markets so yeah if you are a serious market farmer like we are you're going to want your you know staples for the winter time try to try spinach and try to include that in your winter crops and just see how successful you will be i promise you if you give it just the bare essentials it's going to thrive um like i said i grow it in here i have grown it in here once my tomatoes come out um you know my winter and fall or fall excuse me uh tomatoes come out the ones that we're getting ready to plant in here once they're done and over with and we're pulling them out spinach swiss chard and lettuce will go in this tunnel but that's that's religiously what i've always done and it's always been around december um because we go through a little spell where we have less daylight nothing seems to want to grow really well um but at the end of december first of january thing pop back up and slowly but surely they start growing again so that's what we're trying to utilize to have them in the ground we can manipulate the weather somewhat but we can't manipulate the light we can make it warm in here we can make it damp in here you know we can do all kinds of things we just can't manipulate the light that's the only thing that holds us back now there's some you know low, low light loving plants like beets and things of that nature they tend to grow slow but they do grow so you know that's what kind of what we fall back on to have to go to market early 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 spring i'm talking february march along those lines right there where the hunger gap starts all right guys so i'm down to two trays i got to finish those two and get those out here and i'm probably going to start some more lettuce seed um and i know i got some more uh swiss chard i got to start too but i think this is where we're going to end the video i'm gonna get off here and clean this big old mess of junk you see right here up here in just a little bit but don't miss the next video where we're going to be talking about installing this heater in here and finishing up the side rails on this greenhouse out here to the side all right guys so i'm gonna get off here and finish these other two trays up but if you haven't subscribed to our channel reach over here in the right hand corner and click that subscribe button and as always guys we appreciate you stopping by thank you for watching and we'll see you on the next one